business records or employee records? And the answer is no. So if you happen to have oh, a foreign sounding name or you might have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, you may be spied upon and you may never know it. Now this makes a lot of us very uncomfortable and it makes John Ashcroft very happy. <laughs> now, certainly it is easy to argue to people, look, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. That's the argument that has been made from time immemorial to say if you're a good subject of the king, you won't mind having your home searched. If you, are a, if you are a true subject of the king, you won't mind ha having a member of the military living under your roof. People have made that argument for as long as we have sought human liberty, from the time Milton began writing. And it has never held water. Because there are always those who would be willing. There are those who would be willing to say, yes, come, read my files, look at my credit card records, I have nothing to hide, and you know, I hope those people lead a wonderful life. I hope they don't mind at all when they are given an identity tag. You know, frankly, why stop at an identity tag? Why not just barcode us and put an ear tag on like we do cattle? Or if it would be even more convenient, we could probably tattoo a barcode right here. It works really well in 41 through 45. It is the temptation to believe that you do not have a duty to watch how your government behaves that will lead you like lambs to the slaughter to giving up the civil liberties that enable you to function. And while it is terrifying and horrible to think that someone may well choose to fly another airplane into a building that we cherish or care about, or plant a bomb under the arches of the Golden Gate Bridge, or blow up the Hoover Dam, or any of the other high yield targets that unfortunately have been identified, the real high yield target that we have to care about is our freedom. You have the duty as citizens of this country, and I realize here I'm preaching as converted or you wouldn't be here, you'd be home watching West Wing. <laughs> <laughs> you have the duty not only to write your own congressman or senator, or your own congressional representative if you aren't from Iowa and have someone who wears pantyhose to work. <laughs> you have the duty to educate yourself and you have the duty to rally other people to your cause. Citizenship in this country is hard work and it is advanced democracy. It is not a government for people who want to be lazy. It is not a government for people who want to sit home and watch the president on TV because Martin Sheen does such a good job. It is a government for people who are willing to get out there and yell and scream and petition and write and knock and telephone and fax until their elected representatives hear their voices. The real message of Banned Book Week is Freedom is only yours if you work to protect it. Get out there and whether you're fighting for a book or whether you're fighting for the, your library records or whether you're fighting for your ability to walk into a library and read something about hydrogen bombs without the FBI stopping by your house the next day. Fight, don't quit because the minute you do, we've lost the real terrorism battle. Thank you. Thank you to all our panelists. If uh, anyone has a question, uh, please go to the microphone and we will...
work in order, and I'll try to direct it. Or you can just state to whom you'd like to speak. Gina, I tried to follow as carefully as I could your reading from the Iowa Open Records Law uh, regarding the exemption for the release of, of patient information libraries. It seemed to be tied to a specific ability of the government to tie a particular person to a particular criminal act. That is, and according to my understanding, different from and higher than the standard in the Patriot Act as far as what the federal government would need to, to go to the library to get that. You've got a Patriot Act that says you have to release, you've got a state open records law that says you can't release. Is there a conflict there and how would Ames Public Library handle it if there were? Well, here's the, can you hear me? Okay, here, here's the reality. You know, federal laws supersede state laws. That's the first thing. This law exists. Potentially, this is what would happen. This is a scenario. There's, I mean, it, it can be quite complex, but there are potentially three types of inquiries that law enforcement could make. The first would be simply coming in and saying, hey, we'd like to see your records, or, you know, we're kind of looking around, we have some suspicions about certain individuals. At that point, any staff member knows all of those queries simply go to me. If it's simply a request for information, I would deny it. A law enforcement official could also come in with a subpoena. At that point, I would contact our city attorney, John Klaus, who I have worked with on this and will continue to work with on this, um, and we would review the case. We, that is negotiable still. However, under the Patriot Act, if law enforcement comes in with a warrant, I stand aside and they can take the hard drives. That's scary. <laughs> and I can't tell anybody about that. That's also why it puts so much pressure on librarians uh, to erase records quickly, clean caches quickly, get rid of individually identifiable information as soon as they don't need it. And I will tell you that uh, you know I spend most of my time representing newspapers and broadcast stations. Uh, and most of the time, we really oppose efforts to close state-controlled or municipally-controlled records. The Iowa Newspaper Association, the Iowa Broadcasters Association, worked with and supported the Iowa Library Association in getting this exemption passed because we feel that strongly that people need the right of private intellectual inquiry. Uh, but now, I, you know, I love these folks. Uh, I do voluntary work for the Library Association, and this is Crouching Tiger and that's Hidden Dragon. <laughs> um, because you're, you're, you know, you really realize these librarians, you know, their rules in life, one of them is never screw with your librarian. Uh, uh, because, you know, it's, it's like watching them battle with quarter staffs, you know. Well, clean the records the minute the book is back. So the FBI had better be pretty quick on the money. <laughs> Perhaps uh, you already addressed my concern. I fear that the Library Association has uh, made uh, protestations to the federal government, but our university library belongs to the university. The city library belongs to the city. Uh, do we just let libraries fight our fight for us, or do broader institutions to which these libraries belong stand up and defend them? Gosh, I wish Greg Jewelry were here. In terms of the broader issue, that there are a lot of partners with American Library Association in voicing its concern over uh, the Patriot Act and, and specifically in terms of what it has, what its implications can be for privacy of imp privacy of uh, patron records. Uh, we have an association for research libraries that Iowa State belongs to, which is the 115 uh, research libraries in Canada and the United States. Uh, that organization has put money into this issue and has been uh, working with ALA. And ALA as well as also has a numbers of divisions within it, and Public Library Association is one of them, that has been working closely with ALA, um, the ALA Association. Um, I would say that, and I think Gina did a good job of stating the backup that she has within for the Ames Public Library in terms of the legal, of the uh, the legal offices of the city. 
uh, we likewise would have um, access to certainly our legal services uh, office at Iowa State and I, uh, in terms of something, a specific issue or a question or complaint, um, but I have no reason to doubt the support that this university would have uh, for, to protecting within the legal limits of what we can protect our rights to privacy. The public library is a, a department of the city of Ames, but we are unique in that we actually have a governing board. Um, I am, for instance, the only city department head that does not report to the city manager. I have a board of trustees of, of nine. It takes nine people to keep me in line, essentially, is what I'm telling you. <laughs> um, and so the, 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 our mayor and city council, um, of which Herman was uh, a member for some time, um, have always respected and uh, recognized the, the legal authority and um, judgment of the Ames Public Library Board of Trustees. So again, um, I've had nothing but support from our city manager, our city council, our city attorney on these issues. Do you mind if I don't use the mic? It's not working anyway. Um, the first concern is that they came in and took all the hard drives. You couldn't even tell your board of trustees that you needed to replace them for some reason, how many you needed to <laughs> Actually, one of the things that libraries are dealing with right now is most of us have, um, there's a handful of software providers um, that um, have library management systems. And actually, Parks Library and Ames Public Library have the same provider, Dynex. Um, one of the things that we're discovering is exactly what, what you're saying, that we really need to be very careful and, and really hold our vendors' feet to the fire about what's actually going away because we know that there's some historical record that's retained for some time. Um, if, say Barbara comes in and checks out, a, checks out a book, she brings it back, it goes off of her record. It may or may not still be retrievable. And that we have yet to, has yet to be determined unless you have something to add to that, Olivia. Part of what we do within our system is that we override data that already exists and so that it's in a sense copied over so it's it would be extremely difficult to retrieve that. But uh, I, Gina's point is well taken. We need to, as a library community, continue to work closely with the small number of, of uh, commercial vendors out there that create library systems to make sure that we are doing everything we can that when we delete information that we truly are making it for, you know, extremely difficult to retrieve it. I also want to just raise your awareness of one other thing, which is not directly related to library records, but that is computer records that exist in internet service providers. Uh, for example, um, if the Justice Department obtained a warrant from our friends at FISA, uh, the Justice Department could, for example, read all of Iowa State's email. It could read the email of any particular student. It could um, search email looking for certain code words. And the fact that the September 11th hijackers used email to communicate among themselves has meant that the Justice Department has not been willing to make the kind of disclosure about email records that it has made about library circulation or library circulation records. Um, and people need to be aware of that. Uh, there has been years uh, with uh, the Chicago investigation by the U.S. military on files. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Oh, uh, I think they used the uh, Patriot Act to subpoena ISP to uh, find out more about users of um, Chicago, which is to share the illegal media for shared stuff. Actually, that's even more fun. You don't have to go to the Patriot Act. You can just use the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which is even more fun. But that's a whole other course. Take that course. Take that course. <laughs> yeah. I have a question for Barbara. Barbara, do you know what, what the status? Can you hear me? No. No. Okay. 
a bill was introduced, I think, in March of 2003 called the Freedom to Read Act. Do you know the status of that act at this point? In committee, as far as I, I tried to check it today, and if it's come out of committee, I couldn't find it. That's, it, it's a, it would help fix some of the problems. Are there any more? Yes, sir. Let me try the mic again. Yes. Yes. Is that if I talk this way? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. <laughs> you want to talk about two quick points, passing on the fact that I do not understand why Harry Potter won that. We had a similar uh, activity at the uh, in the public library Thursday night with uh, on on this. Several of you may have been there, and I made the point then that Herman and I both made that. Some of this revolves around the notion in the words uh, national security. And it was under the rubric of national security that a lot of this happened. And I would remind you that national security was the reason we interned Japanese Americans in World War II. Mm -hmm. um, national security is also the phrase that Richard Nixon used over and over and over and over to justify everything that he did that turned out to be just illegal as hell. <laughs> Such as sneaking and peeking into the offices of Dr. Fielding, Daniel Elberg's psychiatrist. That was the break-in, the illegal act that they were covering up. They weren't covering up Watergate. They didn't care about Watergate. Those guys had been arrested. They were going to jail. What in Watergate they were worried about. It was the connection between Watergate and the breaking in Fielding's office and what they also called, the Attorney General called the White House Park. So national security is a phrase I read in the newspaper about two weeks ago by spoken by President Bush. That's what we're doing all this for. Okay, then I want to, the second point I want to amend by addition your comment that people ought to fight, fight, fight. Vote early and vote often. And I would point out that in addition to voting, you have to have someone to vote for, someone to run. Barbara, if you're unhappy that we don't have any women in Congress. <laughs> Damn, I miss Governor of California. <laughs> ahead, sir. Just, just to follow up a little bit of information, this Star Chamber Court, the FISB or what, whatever the acronym was, um, information I've read from the ACLU uh, says that they have processed since 1978 15,000 requests from the FBI. Of those 15,000 requests, they have modified five of them turn down zero. So much for checks and balances. Um, I would hope, since there apparently is a conflict between the state law and the federal law, that if you got a request coming in to your library that violated the state law, that you would make a test case out of it. And I think that this community would stand in strong support of you on that. Make them, make them take you to federal court. Make a test case out of it. Um, and while I'm standing up, I'm not going to pass up the opportunity to exercise my First Amendment freedom of association. Anybody who wants to join the ACLU? <laughs> <laughs> All right, be another card carrying member. <laughs> Final questions. Yeah, more. Come I step up, please. Sure. I just have one quick question. When we were talking about hard drives and you know let them take them, um, when. An FBI agent would theoretically come and make a request to for some records. Would they be looking into a patron, or would they be looking for people who were reading on a certain topic? Do they want to know about people, or do they want to know about who's reading what? The problem with the Patriot Act is that it essentially encourages very vague fishing expeditions. So it can be any of those or none of those. 
and they don't have to tell us. Ouch. <laughs> All they really have to say is move over. As far as anything that ties, for instance, your name to what you have requested, checked out, you know, borrowed from another library, um, searched in a database on the internet, no. Did you talk about the sunset provisions of the act? You mean the non-existent sunset provisions? Oh. Yeah. Um, yes, there are sunset provisions. The Patriot Act sort of like some recently passed tax credits um, <laughs> for the wealthy, have sunset provisions that provide that Congress has to um, renew the provisions of the Act. Um, I actually, do you know for sure when the Patriot Act expires? December 2005. Five, thank you. I was, go, I was, was debating between 2005 and 2006. So Congress will have to look at it again. I mean, this is going to continue to be a fight there, there is now pending a total of something like 40 bills that would affect or amend the Patriot Act. And you look at organizations like the ACLU, if you're suspicious, um, I think it is also good to look at things like the Electronic Freedom Foundation, uh, the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, the Intellectual Property Office at the American Library Association, um, are all good places for you to inform yourself about what attempts are being made to moderate the Patriot Act in various ways, shapes, and forms. Some for the good, some for the bad, depending on how you view it. You have to be out there um, making a point to educate yourself and looking at lots of different sources. I mean, frankly, don't trust the ACLU. I'm a member of the ACLU. I think they try to be honest brokers, but they clearly have a, a viewpoint. I spent as much time looking at the Department of Justice website as I did the ACLU website. Uh, and I think that's important. You know, you owe the government a fair hearing. You owe the supporters of the act a fair hearing and you owe its opponents a fair hearing. So, um. I have one unoriginal suggestion. Uh, when John Poindexter um, was put in charge of some surveillance office that was supposed to collect information about our private behavior and our habits, activists on the other side put on the web uh, information about him of the same kind that he was being uh, allowed to collect about us. So pretty soon his house uh, was on the website, his phone number was there, and uh, well, they got so many phone calls, they first unlisted their number and then they sold the house and moved away. <laughs> <laughs> Why, how, about, how about asking John Poindexter to be an example of, of, of patriotic citizenship and report to the public about everything he reads? Uh, how, how would he refuse that? If, if, if indeed this is such a good idea that we know and if he's such a <laughs> virtuous citizen, then we ought to emulate him. So maybe if he could create his top or top ten list, which will be published in the newspaper, and that will presumably bring business to libraries of, of your kind, because there are lots of people who agree with John Poindex. So you presume they would like to read what he reads so they become equally smart. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing that we might be aware of is that the ACLU has been very proactive in this regard. But you can also find the Americans for Tax Reform, uh, Norquist, who has come out and said to the conservatives, remember, someday Hillary Clinton is going to be the Attorney General. You conservatives need to remember that. Uh, and, 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 and you have uh, 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 Barr, Robert Barr from Georgia, who's come out and said that the Patriot Act is the the, the most atrocious attack on our civil liberties in, in our history. Dick Armey came out and has, you know, he stripped out the TIPS program. Uh, and uh, Phyllis Shapley's Eagle Forum has signed on to a letter. So there's a whole range of uh, other groups that are concerned about this from, not from the ACNU line, our perspective, but from other perspectives as well. So it, you can make a case that this is, this is across the board concern. It isn't just... 
wide-eyed, bedwetting, knee-jerk, bleeding heart, commie, pico-sympathizing, less leaning liberals? Paul? <laughs> 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 it, it, it's important. And I think the other thing is, it's not, you know, there, as we noted here, the Patriot Act was passed in 1981, then there's then there's Patriot Act two, 2, which is in draft, and then there's the Victory Act, which is, or Orrin Hatch is supposed to be introducing this month. And all of these things are coming up, and if they aren't admitted one way, then they're attached to other pieces of, pieces that are attached to other pieces of legislation. So you have this kind of sneak approach for adding on to and expanding on the, the, these different acts. It has nothing to do with 215, which is what we're dealing with here in, 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 from the Patriot Act. But I, I guess my final comment is, in some ways, this is almost a distraction from the war on terrorism. And, and it's, I mean, it's important for us to pay attention to this, else, but I'm not, are we any further, are we more secure because we have 215 on the books? Uh, is that, really, you know, if, will that prevent another terrorist attack? Uh, you know, uh, if, if you put it all on the screen, we have to address these things, but while we're addressing these things, what in the hell else are they doing? And that's why you have to keep looking at the Victory Act and all these other things, because these guys work overtime on this stuff. And it's, it's incredible. But it's also nice to know that there are a few people on the right and the middle and everyone else that are on board this thing. And that, that, that well is. said. I would only um, probably correct the conservative that said Hillary Clinton will be the Attorney General. I, I think what they're really afraid of is that Hillary Clinton will be appointing the <laughs> Attorney General. <laughs> more questions. I can't limit questions <laughs> like this. So if you do have one, please go up to the microphone. Well, just a, a few summation points. Vote, vote, vote. Um, it's an important notion uh, to what we're talking about. Probably the most important concept that makes this forum so public and so important at a land-grant institution. The purpose of education is not so that you can make more money or find a job or uh, achieve social mobility. The purpose of an education in a republic is simply to make intelligent choices in the voting booth. Well, that's it. That's why education in this country is so important. The First Amendment equally is important to hold our elected officials accountable. Thomas Jefferson said that if he had a choice, he would prefer newspapers without government rather than governments without newspapers. But he said a second sentence after that that I think is germane not only to education at a land-grant institution and journalism, but libraries too. He said, provided that the populace can read those newspapers and that they would be circulated. There are banned books in the corner. Mine is not a banned book. It's how to write one. And over there, <laughs> over there are refreshments. Thank you all for this public forum and participation in Citizenry.